be doing my uh, doctoral studies into University of Ulsan and I'm hoping to graduate soon. So uh, it's been an honor for my prophet, uh, for me to be here with you guys. And also Dr. Jiaudin was my supervisor back in the bachelor days, like you guys when I was like yours. So that time like professor guided me how to do the research and uh, other stuff like this. And for him and for his guidance, actually, today I'm here and able to talk to you guys. So today I want to share with you some uh, practical projects and live coding session. And I would expect like uh, you guys also do the coding with me uh, because that will be kind of experience. And actually the practical fact is the coding, the programming, everything is available into the internet. So the main thing is the more you practice, each and everything you can copy from internet no problem but you should practice and you should understand like how this thing works so i am actually sharing my screen right now okay uh, wait 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 my young yes. can you can you can you explain in korean yeah what about the yeah yeah uh, 그거 인터넷 만 인터넷에 많은 거 있으니까 뭐 예를 들어서 뭐 어디고 그 기탑이나 어 그런 데도 있으니까 막 그런 데 들어가서 다운 받아서 뭐 직접 해보고 그렇게 하라고 하시고 어 뭐가 안 내가 he will share the code okay just we will practice together okay he will tell us how to find the code in the internet what I understand uh, he is saying that he want to say that all the codes are available in the internet we should know how to Use the support for our own data set. Okay, Yang, can you explain? Yes. 그러니까 코드들이 인터넷에 많고 그것을 어떻게 찾을지랑 그리고 그 가져와서 그 뭐라고 해야 되나? How to use the data set for? Uh, how to use that code for our own data set? Yeah. We should know it. 그러니까 이제 데이터셋도 어떻게 쓰는지도 알려주고. Okay. So if they have any question, they may ask in Korean too. Okay, we don't have any problem. Okay, so hello guys, if you have any question, any question, you may ask in Korean. Okay, okay, please continue. Yes. Uh, so today, uh, I want to take the session about uh, the image classification. Mainly, I will focus on the image classification, how we can use the classifier for image classification. I will not go into the details of feature extraction and this type of thing. Yes. And I will also give some uh, practical example. If we have audio data, how can we do the pre-processing a little bit more to get a better accuracy to use it for the classifier. So the title of today's session is 101 of image classification. 101 means the very basic and audio analysis. So uh, the plan is we will mostly do the coding with Google Colab because in the Google Colab we uh, do not need to install any type of library most of the time and it is online based so anytime we can do anything so the plan is we will have total three session uh, session one i want to share with you guys uh, about uh, how we can import image data and make it fit to send it to the classifier and then finally we'll classify so in the session one, we will not go into very deep. We'll just download the data and we'll set the environment of our coding. And at the end, uh, we will arrange the data. In the session two, we will use two classifier mainly. One is SVM, support vector machine. Another one is KNN, K nearest neighbor. And we will see how we can use this classifier uh, to get the classification results most of the time. And the third session will go 
for the basics of audio data pre-processing or processing. That is the main goal of today's session. And now I will actually go with the uh, coding session. But before that, I want to send a link uh, to uh, in the chat room so that you can download this data set. So after downloading the data set by yours, uh, you can put this into your Google Drive. I will show that to you. So, okay. So I'm sending that thing by... Um, yeah. um, by the chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this is the data set and uh, now uh, meanwhile, you guys can download the data set and I will go and briefly talk about the data set right now. Uh, but I recommend like if everyone can download the data set, that will be very better because then we can uh, start the... Should they, should they uh, load the data set in the yes, drive? In yes. their drive? In their right. drive or, or in the, in the hard disk? Uh, no, no, in the drive, sir. Professor, I, I am uh, telling them the full process. Uh, I think the screen is visible, right? Yes. Okay. So the link I gave, the data set called color classification. So if you go to the link, which I have provided, you will get this data set. So into this data set, we have very simple data set. We have actually one, two, three, four, four six colors, black, blue, brown, green, red, and white. So in the black folder, you will see there are only several photos of black color. And in the blue folder, there are several photos of the blue color. There are some elements, but it has blue color. So our goal is to uh, make a classifier uh, with SVM or KNN classification technique so we'll pass this uh, data to the classifier and the end the classifier can be able to tell us whether the color of this object is red green uh, okay. blue okay. or white okay okay Jonai. so what do i understand okay you should you guys should download the all the uh, data set okay and actually you should upload the data set in the in your drive own drive okay yes so as the colon is a drive base, so you should upload all the data set in the Google your Google Drive. Then you we can start on the on the colon. Okay. So the objective is to classify the not only the object to to classify the object based on the color. Okay. We will not classify the object. Okay. We will classify the color. Okay. So Yan, can you explain that? They should download. They should upload, download and upload this file in the drive. Okay. Uh, yes, and professor, one more thing. Uh, when you guys upload, please make sure, as you can see in my screen. Mm -hmm. So in the my drive folder, create a folder called programs, mm -hmm. and under that you just upload the folder mm -hmm. you just downloaded. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, young, can you hear? Okay, good. 그 채팅 창에 올려온 링크로 따라가 가지고 거기 뭐 블랙 뭐 브라운 뭐 아이들한 무슨 컬러들이 많아 그래서 그걸 다운 받아 가지고 이제 따라 할 건데 그 그거를 나중에 콜랩에 넣어 가지고 그 같이 하면서 하자 그 그거야 그래 가지고 음소 so, so you wanted to make a folder for the specific this Data set yeah. Or... yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the the following way, okay. You should create a folder named programs and then class under the color classification, you they should uh load all the can you click on the color classification? Uh, okay. Yeah, in this way, okay. They should upload all the all the file. Okay? Yeah, that's good. Yes, Okay, 
그 공통된 컬러 클래시피케이션이라고 그 폴더 이름, 이름을 만들어서 거기 안에 그 색깔 다 집어 넣으면 아마 코딩할 때도 문제가 없을 거예요. 야, 플리즈 도 잇, 오케이? 이즈 베리 이즈 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 Uh, can we directly use the share, shared folder in our code? Uh, I don't think so. Because we need to mount the drive. So I don't think so. Uh, could we please download, okay? Download and upload. Okay, I'm, do I'm downloading. I was just thinking like when we mount, <laughs> we just make it directly use it like a, without. It's okay. It's okay. One part, you know, for the. So it will be more convenient if you have this data set up in your drive. I think you can mount, but for that we need to use this command probably. Yeah. So I can just write the code so that in order to mount the shared drives, right? Yeah, you can do it. However, mm -hmm. I recommend you to download it because I actually personally did not try this. And as on your own, for your own project, I believe you will download the data, right? So I think it's better if yeah. you can download. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Shall I start? No, no, wait a minute. Yes, after downloading the file, just uploading the whole, whole file in the whole folder in the drive. Okay? So. so, what I did here, actually, I download the file and then just upload, drag and paste. Okay, then it's uploading. Okay, so you can. 
lowering the under the cool level, okay, cool level. Okay. Now it's okay, complete. If you see, so this is the color, color classification folder, and you can see the uh, subfolder, okay, under the color classification data set. Mm -hmm. So after uploading the file, okay, please let us know whether you have done it or not. Just download and then drag and paste the folder in the cool app folder here. Yeah. Hello guys, can you turn on your camera, please? You should turn on the camera. No debate, are you there, Mr. Jalul? Usman, Ramazun? Yes, sir, I have some problem with camera. Is it okay if I stay turn off only for this class? Mm -hmm. So, hello guys, please write, okay? After, after uh, uploading the file successfully, please write here, okay? Have you done it? For example, me done, okay? Can you write your status in the chat? Just write. After completing, right, okay, please, right. Just download and upload in your drive under the cooler, cooler folder. And right here, okay, write your status as, as soon as possible. Okay. What are the other guys? Skandar? Nudivek, Shoro, Osmoon, Mirjalur. Shoro, have you done it? Yeah, I haven't finished it. Yeah. Because un unless you have these data set in your computer, okay, you will not be able to practice with us. Okay, do it within two minutes, okay? Please write your status, okay, in the chat. Bunyan, have you done it?
Yong Han. Ju Yong Han. Have you done it? Right, right. Osmoon, are you there? Yes, uh, professor, I'm here. So, have you done it? Uh, uh, trying. Why trying? Okay. Like, couldn't Just explain. download and upload. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, please do it. Give me a little, please do. Then you know what we should do? We should open the new collab. Hey, yes, Professor. Okay. Start, so, start your work. So we can go to the Google lab and then Mm -hmm. uh, actually, make sure first one thing, the drive, suppose I have a lot of email address, right? So the data I have into this email address, so I you should make sure first you know, which email address you need to uh, upload the data and like better to switch to that email address. And after that, we can open from here the new notebook, right? So, yep. Okay. Okay, so now if we just uh, click into here the file, okay, so we need to it will take the time. And here is the Google Drive button, right? So you can click here to mount the drive. So connect to Google Drive. And yes, the drive appeared here. So if we now just expand the drive, so here I kept the data set here, the color classification, so it appeared, right? So this thing is needed for us to do the thing. Can you share the code to mount the drive or just only the folder? Uh, no, no, professor, only the folder, I think. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, it's, all, it's okay. Yes. So just click on the folder and then you can see the mount drive, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm, yes, it's up here. Mm. I think everyone downloaded already. Mm -hmm. Hello, what did you what did you say? I think everyone is ready. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, so now as we mounted the drive, so first thing is uh, we need to check like whether the directory is and how the operating system path is working. So you can just practice with me this code. Uh, however, this portion of code, I uh, recommend you to do, but uh, if you don't want to do this part, that is okay. So first we are like importing the OS and then for... You, you can share the code okay, in the chat. Then we can practice copy and paste and then see, okay? Yeah.
So here we need to give the path of our data set, right? So how to copy the path like this, copy the path, okay? So simply we just this three dot, we can go and copy the path of the data set because we need all the data are there. So we simply just go here and uh, control V paste here, okay? And then we can execute the command. I get file name not found, okay? So yes. file, yes, yes. file name. Okay, so wait, can you yeah. share the code with us? Can you share this code in the chat? Yes, uh, just copy and then pass in the, the chat. Yes, it's possible. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, guys. Just copy and then paste in your code, okay? And then see. Maybe you need to change the drive, okay? Uh, location. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we don't have to. If we did it inside the programs. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Oh, I yeah, said uh, like we don't have to change the drive if we did as like a uh, like a uh, program yeah. inside. Yes. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Then. Okay. So next portion is uh, as we will move forward. So the better thing is like let's import some basic libraries. So okay. So one library is very common that we use every time. That is NumPy library. So import numpy as numpy. And then another one is panda import. But however, when you want to do it in your computer, make sure that uh, you have installed it, like pip install pandas or pip install numpy as well. And we also do do some plotting. So I think we need a uh, Mac plotly. Plot it will be okay, and then we will plot this thing into inline. Inline means uh, inside uh, when we want to print something actually, so it will come inline. So that's why we need to write this command matplotlib inline. And another thing is, as we will be working with the image data set, right? So we need to import the cd2 as well okay, then execute it and uh, this is the importing basic libraries mm. can you can you explain what is the purpose of first one okay so file directory check okay actually uh professor the thing is sometimes the directory path is not correct mm -hmm. uh we do not might uh, get the directory uh names correctly or the mm -hmm. path correctly okay. so to get to make sure those things like we are saving the path and all the file names into one variable called directory name and mm -hmm. the variable called file names like mm -hmm. that so, so most, if if the if it is not work so that means we can see some error actually uh the it it will not work, not like that. It, it will work if we change some directory as well, but for future reference, actually, it will be necessary sometimes. Okay. So okay, it's okay, a good okay. practice, actually. Okay, okay, thank you. Share, share, share. Yes. So yes. hello guys, uh, just copy and then paste, okay, in your code and see. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so now, uh, actually, the next block is we need to declare the data directory. I uh, we, we, we don't need to declare it anymore because uh, we already imported it with the file directory check. However, mm -hmm. the common practice wise, I will do it, okay? Because this is just an 
not advanced thing, just a hands-on experience. So again, I am copying okay. the path and then just it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, data directory we said, and now we will see like how many categories into in our data, right? So these folders means each category, right? So mm -hmm. black, blue, brown, green, white, red. One, yes. two, three, four, five, six, six categories. So let's write the name of the six categories here as it is into our data folder. Please write the name like this. Black is B, like blue, next, right? So then brown. Okay, I'm making a mistake. Brown. Okay. Then green. Green. Right. And at the end is red. Okay. So and also I want to say like how will be my image size? So in hundred image will take. So let's execute this code and then giving this code. So please make sure you change the path like yours. Okay. So Wait, why did you set the image size? Uh, actually, what does it uh, uh, we are actually considering only 100 images right now. Uh, yeah, mm. because uh, we want to limit the code right now because we do not okay. want to go. Okay, okay. For example, mm -hmm. uh, 100 images means what? For each folder, you are taking the same amount of images, or how will you say? Actually, Professor, here every folder has image already, okay? Yeah, in, in yeah, total. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so this is not dividing that thing, okay? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, actually, the thing is the dimension of the image we are declaring now. Suppose I want to take 100 by 100 in size mm -hmm. the image, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I am declaring the variable like image size just one variable I'm declaring. It might be the height, it might be the width, but for that part, I am like declaring here it, it is as it is, okay? Okay, so, hello guys, please, you may ask, okay? I may ask you the question yes. of your yeah? You should ask them, whenever you have any question, you may ask, okay? Yeah, okay, please continue. So, yeah, I, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, we already like uh, uh, showed it the directory and the categories. So it bought everything. So let's like plot one image. Okay. So, categories. If you want, you guys can also code with me. That's, I think, better.
Yes. So the goal of this code is like for category and categories. So for all the categories over here, we want to actually plot a random image. And the thing is, we are first giving the path. So path is west.path.join from here, data directory and this data directory and the category. Okay. So which category it belongs? So it actually, suppose if it gets like the path and the category gets black, so it will go to this path, right? The slash black path. And then for image in West list directory path, so the path it will go for image and then it will read that particular image and then it will plot that image. So the break thing is like after plotting on the one image, you are breaking the loop just to plot the sample image. Previously, like I made some indentation error. So the break command got I mean, destroyed. So all the images came. However, this is the purpose of just plotting one image. So we are make sure that we got the data and it is able to plot that as well. So now the next block. Uh, wait, 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 give them yes. some time, okay? Okay. To practice, to see whether it's okay. okay. Okay, uh, I am facing some problem. Can you fix it? Yes. What also, or what can, can you see my screen? Yes. So what is the problem here? Uh, for image into OS, no file size directory. Yes. Uh, uh, in your case, professor, actually, we are not getting the directory. Mm -hmm. So, so I think. Uh, the problem with the path previously. Yeah, this one? Uh, yeah, this will work, but I think you don't have that path. You just copied my path. So. No, this is my path. Okay, okay. I need okay. to change it. Yes, okay. yes, this okay. one. Yeah. Okay. Mm, no, you Yes. I also say. Yeah, yeah. So you should I fix, think... okay? You should fix your own path, okay? Go here and then copy the path with just replace this path, okay? By your your uh, folder path, okay? Then it will work. Yeah, see. Yeah, in categories, I wrote red in capital letters. That's why. It... Uh, mm -hmm. couldn't find my path. Not in name, yeah. yeah. That's true. What should I do to stop? Uh, professor, actually, uh, go to the break section. Yeah. yeah. How we can see? So this, it should be the same line? Like this? <laughs> yes, uh, it will be the same line. Oh. Unexpected indentation. Okay, and this for actually, you see my screen, professor. So, yep. Oh, how would you look here? Can you share your screen? Uh, yes, yes. I think it's visible right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, tools, editor. Okay, actually, in the collab, that's the problem. Uh, in other uh, 
I mean, ID, we can actually fix these things, but here it's a little bit problem. Anyways, so yes, this is the screen. Okay, okay. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. First break will be for this for loop and the second break will be for this for loop. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This work. Okay, the next part is these image size is different, right? So as I previously told, I want to take the image size of 100 by 100. So we need to that resizing of the image as well. We need to create the training data, right? So for that purpose, now we need to write some code. So perform some processing to store the data. So first thing is, let's create some empty training data, and then create some function to create the training data. We get, so the function we actually write by defining df, this command is the function command. So df something means a function. You zoom your screen, zoom in your screen. Zoom is better. Okay, now clear? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now the thing is here uh, for category and categories like previous, we are taking the path. And if we see here the path, uh, this is the path we are taking here. Now for class number, like each category belongs to which class number. So we'll define like this, like category suppose black will be class number zero, blue will be class number one, brown will be class number two, three, four, like that. So that's why categories dot index of category. This will return us the index number, okay? And for image in OS is directory path, like previous. Now we will read image one by one. So, okay. Read image underscore error equal to now say to again I am now this line we actually read the image one image we read from that image directory okay so we read that image so it is a loop 
So each image will be like this. The second line should be, we need to resize the image, right? Because we told already, we want to get the image 100 by 100. We don't know exactly like how much image size we have into our data set. We did not uh, went into that thing. So we have to reshape our image by uh, 100 by 100. So the command is cb2.resize. So the original image is in the image array file. And now, here we declared image size, right? So this variable we can repeat right now. Height, comma, width. Good. Now, in uh, underscore data. So every time we read a new data, we will put this into this list. So training data dot end. new array and we will also put the class number over there right because in it we will have the our resized image suppose it is a black image if it is black over here then it will be one okay or zero the corresponding thing now what about you make a mistake over there suppose we have black blue brown green white red suppose we write like this then so this folder it will not get right over here so we can do one thing we can create some try this is called exception actually so what if like we if the folders are okay like this so okay uh, but i think no need right now just to skip this part no need to make it complex let's keep it simple so okay okay so we fill this way so this is the function now let's run this function okay okay so we executed this function so and now let's check if uh, i will uh, share the code but let's first check whether we can create the training data or not let's execute successfully Okay, let's see if it's executing successfully or not. Just we are resizing the images, right? To yes. Code. Yes, okay. yes. Yes. You can think this is the one pre-processing part. Yeah. And after resizing it, I am simply just calling this function create training yeah, yeah. data. So then every data set yes it is successful so you can use this code actually no problem so it's resized all images yes inside exactly. of this uh it's actually it is resizing all the images but not inside of these folders actually it is reading all the files from these folders and keeping into this yeah. array okay this training data okay so yeah resizing it and saving it as a matrix form. So now we can do one thing. Mm. Okay, let's do one thing. Take the land of let's check how much we have training data right so each uh, training data size is 100 by 100 so we are just taking training data so how much data we took for training let's see And uh, we need to save it. Image. And same thing. We are just saving it now. The length. 
okay actually we are telling training data we are actually taking all the data from here but we still did not split the data into training testing so this variable name could be something but it's okay just keep it like that just progress with me uh, okay so after this okay now these data are into this all the data set are into this training data folder here we have the image itself 100 by 100 and also we have the label right the one two three four like that so now we will keep the images as the image the only the data information we, we want to store into x and the level information we want to store into y okay so level means the categories like x will tell me the images only y will tell me the levels only okay so that is why we are separating the levels the separating the data separating the data set into image and levels okay previously we just read all the data and we store into this variable okay this variable so now we are in the training data we had this resized image and the class level so now from that our goal is we will separate the images as x and separate the levels as y why we saved all the things here because to use it for future purpose suppose you want to build something new then you can again just use this variable training data because it has all the information so no need to use it again and again So now let's uh, separate those things for category. Level in training data, as I said earlier, the categories and levels both are into the training data, right? So now simple command x dot append categories. Categories. Then level. And simply now we need to okay do this with command command here. Okay. Now um, one thing I will want to show you. That is level dot size minus one. So you guys. Can you please go to this link I give into the chat? Did you enter to the link? Yeah. Okay. So here you see what does minus one mean in numpy v shape? Okay. So you see here one example. A is a numpy matrix. So it has like one, two, three, four, one set of numbers, and then another set of numbers is five, six, seven, eight. So if I give a comma minus one, that means this matrix, the two sets of number comes all together, okay? So the question this user asks, what does this minus one mean in numpy v shape, right? So actually, let's see what they told the final conversion. Okay. 12 elements with reshape minus one common corresponds to an array with x equal to 12 by one. Okay. 
let's execute the code first and then we see so my uh, goal was to show you guys one thing uh, to give you an intuitive idea that if an matrix shape is like this we have a lot of separate separate uh, sample suppose you may say this is one sample you may say this is another sample so if we reshape like this a comma minus one that will take all our samples together okay so if you sometimes copy codes from internet you might come across these type of lines okay so don't get nervous just uh, go along with the code if you want to take some code from internet because definitely when you develop uh, some projects and you rely on to the internet this type of line might come okay so here as well for our case this type of line will come okay so the thing is we actually appended this uh, uh, categories into x and the levels into y this thing is done however we need to now do this numpy array x to reshape. We need to reshape, okay? So, reshape is the length of our image was 77. And one. So, we print as well. Actually, if you guys would use the uh, spider, the id then it would be very easier for us to visualize the whole thing okay uh, how this matrix uh, the data inside into the matrix uh, however as i am doing it here the c here we have 77 samples and all other the data are flooded into like how much 30,000 30,000 30, okay and now the part will come whenever you pass the data into the classifier always remember one thing we need to normalize the data okay so what does it mean normalization so to give you an intuitive example can you copy the code yes 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 is Yeah, it's okay. Last one, 16. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I am just giving a simple concept of normalization. Suppose this is one image, okay? And you know, image has a lot of pixel values, okay? Like these, we have a lot of grids, you may say, or the pixels, you may say, whatever is better for you to understand, okay? So these values will vary from one image to another image, okay? These image pixel values will not be similar as these image pixel values, right? So what if, what if we want to create an standardized, suppose I tell one of you guys, in another example, I tell one of you guys to purchase me uh, a banana, okay? So when I tell you to purchase me one banana, you maybe come to me and said, okay, the banana price is $1, okay? Now, I gave you actually $10, and out of that, you gave returned me like $9, right? So how much money you spent? 10% money you spent, and... Uh, 90 percent you return to me okay so some another guy i gave him to purchase a mango or apple maybe okay and he gave me like returned me like only three dollar okay but i gave him 20 dollar in total okay so that means the previously i gave ten dollar now i gave twenty dollar but the scale is different right so if i want to make compare like how much money they return to me based on a scale of 10 or based on a scale of 100 then one thing we can do it like we can multiply this 10 with 10 that means it is 100 so we can calculate the percentage and with 20 we can multiply it with 5 and we can get like 100 that means it is into the percentage so everything we are scaling up to create a generalized overview okay so in the image case, always you remember one thing, 
to normalize the image, each pixel have 255 pixel value we consider, okay? So all the values, if we divide with 255, then we get a normalized score, okay? So this is the image normalization or flattening the array or image uh, flattening technique, lot of the things you might find into the internet. So when you copy this thing, just remember this thing, this will actually flatten the or normalize the image, okay? So as we now put all the images into this X numpy array, right? So now our goal is now to normalize it or flatten it, okay? So in array case, we tell flatten the array. So it is now an array. So we have 77 samples and each sample has a length of 30,000. So now we want to uh, normalize it. How? Very simple, x equal to x divided by 255.0, okay? Like this. So flatten the array. So this is the common. And uh, example of the flatten array, if you want to just print it out to see how the array values will differ, I think all will be in between uh, around one or below one like this. So if we just take one, the x of one so yes it it, it will belong to around uh, uh, one range zero to one range because the highest value is 255 the lowest value is, uh, can, we, can we take a break for 10 minutes break yes yes probably. so okay. see you at uh, you can take your break and you can practice that. if you have any question up to this you may ask otherwise we have to take a break till 2 30 okay Yes, yes. We're going to take a short break because we are already on the break and practice. Okay. 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 Sure. Yeah. So yeah. So, so if you don't have any question, you may I take a break. You know, if I share my screen, mm -hmm. can you help me. So, for example, I need to fill up to this, and then yes. I cannot see anything here. Oh, yeah. uh, so what's the problem? No, 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 it's fine. Uh, okay, so yes, it's a problem because uh, to call the function, okay? So mm -hmm. create training data, you have to sir, call the first bracket as well. Create training data, first oh. bracket, yes. Okay. Yes, done. Then just... Oh, there is only function. Yes, yes, this, this is the function call. Okay. Actually, when you are calling the create training data, it was showing us the path of that function where it is stored. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, now it's okay. Mm -hmm. Now it will come. Mm -hmm. Okay. A length of image. I think you missed one sentence, Professor. Uh, length of image. Okay. So. Oh, maybe it is another video. Yes. Length yes. of image. Length of image. Oh, no problem. Okay. You can just uh, before that you can just. Uh, use that uh, this this line okay 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 wait wait and just before this block you can just put yes yes that's fine now it should work yes okay okay thank you see you at two two thirty okay okay, okay. Yes, thank you. So, <clears throat> on the previously, we actually reshaped our uh, categories, X. Uh, we also have another variable that is Y, right? That is our levels. So, Y should be in an array form as well. So, Y equal to numpy, np dot array form Y. We need to convert this into numpy array. And then we can check the shape of Y, Y dot shape like this so i gave the code into the chat box so you can copy this code and uh, then execute so till now what we see is like uh, we took the data we put that normal uh, we actually resize the data and then we uh, take the data uh, as x and y 
and we formatted the data as well by formatting means like we flattening the x and also reshaping the y so we now have the x and y the images as well as the level we have now the thing is we have x and y so before passing to the classifier okay classifier has mainly two roles one is training and another one is testing so first phase is phase one is the training phase and phase two is the testing phase right so all of this data the 77 data from them some of the data will go to the training and some will go to the testing so that means the x and y we have these x and y we need to split into training and testing and then with training data we need to train our classifier and then with the testing data we need to check the result so for splitting the training and testing the x and y we can do like this for that we need to import a library from model selection and split no first thing is as i told from x and y we need to create x training x testing y training y testing so yes X test y underscore test. X comma Y. Okay. Now, with this command X and Y, we can like X will go to training and testing and uh, training Y will go also training testing, but how many percentage we want this thing, we also need to keep. Suppose we have 100 data points, so we want to keep uh, twenty percent data for testing and eighty percent data for training. So we can mention here test size zero point two zero. That means twenty percent out of one. So that means eighty percent of the data randomly will go for training, and rest twenty percent will randomly go for testing. So we execute this part of the code, and it has been executed. So I am giving this code here. Okay. So we split the data into training and testing phase. So the training data is into X training and the corresponding level are into Y training and the test data into X test and correspond level into the Y test. Now the part comes, that is the classifier, okay? So, question two, classifier. <coughs> So first thing is, uh, as I told into my presentation, we will use two classifier, okay? The first classifier we gonna use is the SVM classifier and the second classifier we'll use is the KNN classifier. The KNN classifier is the most simplest classifier and I like this classifier a lot. SVM is also very uh, simple classifier, but the background theory is little bit uh, uh, strong than KNN, however, we first start with SVM, we'll see how this SVM we can apply. And then with very in details things we will do with the KNN classifier because that is very simple, okay? So now let's start with the SVM classifier. So we now have the X training and training testing data. So now the thing is like, how can we use the uh, SVM classifier to classify the data, okay? So the from, scale learn 
dot svm is vc is vc so this way we can import the svm classifier and then vc equal to vc okay so just write the code with me uh, I will little bit intuitively explain to you what it does and what it means okay so in the SVM if you read the theory okay you will find it takes a lot of kernels, okay? What does it kernel means is, uh, how to say, two types of kernels are there usually we use. One is linear and one is Gaussian kernel. When you try to classify images, if you do not need, uh, want to learn the theory, that is okay. You can change with linear to Gaussian and then you see the performance, okay? You can use the same code, but just change the kernel. So. How can you see how, what type of command we can use? Just let's go to Google and let's write here, this scikit-learn SVC, okay? So here you can see, uh, okay. And the, here, the kernel, okay? Linear, poly, RBF, sigmoid, pre-computed, also previously to has like Gaussian, maybe they converted the name into pre-computed kernel and gamma scale auto. There are a lot of functions over there, okay? So you can play with all of these and then check how the performance vary for you, okay? But very simple and straightforward uh, attack is uh, we can directly write kernel linear and gamma auto. And then we, with this line actually build the classifier, okay? Now, this classifier we build and save it into this variable as we see. So now we need to pass our training data set into this classifier. So as we see dot fit should be x underscore train comma y underscore train so by this command what we'll do is we can <coughs> training our training data right so these are the commands i gave here and let's execute this thing you see the uh, code has been executed and this type of result we will get okay so now let's check the performance of the classifier okay so what does it mean the performance of the classifier to check in this portion we actually training the data okay and now we will test so of course we'll test with our test data so what does it mean the test data test data means the x test data we'll pass the x test data and we will see if i give it an image like black or white or red whether it can able to tell me what image it is so it will give me some kind of predicted levels and then we'll match these levels with the white so we'll see those so for test equal to the variable declared <coughs> predict, predict. Pass the x test okay so now okay we are predicting something but we need to now check like how the prediction is working on right so to check this one we will see the accuracy score so how um oops sorry Okay, so there are a lot different types of accuracy measurement for the classifiers. With the KNN, I will show more, but here just remember one thing we want to calculate the accuracy. Okay, there are a lot of matrices for calculating the performance of the uh, 
uh, any classifier. But very simple thing is like, let's understand intuitively, we know like how much accuracy our model has, right? We ask like this, right? So we take the accuracy score here. So from a scalar and dot matrix, import accuracy score, and then mm, let's print the accuracy score. So we had this test data. You remember we splitted those data like training and testing. So this Y test and now we have our own predicted results Y2. So it will make the comparison between these two, this original and predicted, and then it will give us the result. Let's see. The accuracy score is uh, 0 0.875. So if you just change it some different kernel. RBF, you need to check the RBF, RBF. RBF. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, they are saying that the uh, by default mm -hmm. is the RBF. Yes, yes. So the RBF command is RBF simply. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's change it to RBF instead of linear. Okay. And uh, let's see how does it affect our performance so now it is 0 0.875 yes it's uh <laughs> going down okay yes yeah. so so like this you can play with anything okay so the best practice is the theory you can read into the book but sometimes it might be very difficult to understand to get what it is written into the book. So my suggestion is just change and practice and play. See into the internet how people did this code and why, uh, I mean, what they use, linear or RBF, like that, if you practice, 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 you will have that understanding. And at the end, then you will understand the theory very, in a very nicer way, okay? So now copy the last line. Ah, okay, okay. Sure. Okay. Maybe this is the end of the first classifier, am I right? Uh no, a little bit more is there. Okay, okay. So I told you like we are calculating the accuracy score, but not only the accuracy score, we have several other accuracy parameters, okay? Those parameters are kind of F1 score, precision, okay, recall. So I am not going into the theory, but someone just come and say, okay, uh, you calculated the accuracy score, okay, fine, but I need these matrices as well, okay? So how will you get those matrices? There are very, uh, how to say, easy uh, way to get these matrices into Python, that is, you can import a library from a scalar and dot matrices and uh, import classification report. Okay. And then very similarly, we can write the classification report is report is okay then not accuracy score it should be underscore report very straightforward and then run it yes you see here the precision score is coming we have five classes so zero one two three four five means for each class then the first column is uh, a precision score second column is recall score third column is f1 score and support means how much test data went. So that means three test data we gave from class zero. One test data we gave from class one. It went randomly actually from your data, okay? So based on how much data you are giving it and based on that, how much it is performing, this thing you can get with this command, okay? And if you want to see like how your model uh, I mean, manually, if you want to see like how it performed, then we can just 
use this line the result equal to I, I want to see like okay if my original level is one what my predicted level is this thing i want to see okay so you can uh, the two column we can make so after printing out the result you will see this mm. yes you see so result suppose the original was four and the predicted was four original was four predicted was four original was that for the third sample when it is going to the classifier original was five but it predicted it as two so original was three it predicted as three is correct original was zero it was zero correct so like this it will go on okay uh, i am giving the code why the f1 school is not coming uh, the f1 score actually professor came but here actually the google collab the identification score is uh, okay 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 uh, first column first column is the precision yeah. and then yes. the score and the okay yes okay So this is the end of the SVM classifier, and then we'll move to the uh, okay. KNN classifier. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait. Hello, guys. If you have any question, you may ask. <clears throat> Yan, are you there? Yes. Yes. Can you share your screen and then explain in Korean to your friend? Uh, I'm doing. Uh, okay. 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 Error, so okay. I need to okay. Cover the okay. Okay. Complete. Okay. Complete up to this. Okay. OS 이걸 써가지고 어떻게 뭐 포르프를 써가지고 여기 폴더 안에 요거 여기 폴더 안에 요거 이렇게 하나씩 하나씩 하게 하는 거고 요 유니티 사이즈는 뭐 그냥 해놨고 그 다음에 어 이거는 그거 샘플 이미지 하나 됐나 잘 먹나 안 먹나 그거 보는 거고 어그 다음에 이거는 이제 트레, 트레이닝 데이터 하나 만드는 건데 어 이거를 해가지고 아 여기는 일단 함수 설정이고 음, 여기서 이제 함수를 사용하는 거지. 그리고 이 트레이닝 데이터는 안에 이거 실, 뭐야 이거. 이 함수 실행하고 나면은 이제 그 트레이닝 데이터 안에 이제 77개, 여기 안에 아마 이거 개수 같은데, 그만큼 이제 그 안에 들어가 있고 트레이닝 데이터 안에. 그래가지고 이제 여기서 X랑 Y랑 해가지고 하는 건데, X는 이제 보통, 어, 뭐라고 해야 되나, 어. X가 레이블이었나? 이미지였나? 그건 나 기억 안 나는데 둘 중에 하나야. 아, 여기 있네. Y가 레이블이고 X가 그런 이미지인 거야. 어, 그래서 이제 어, 이 X랑 Y 리스트에다가 이렇게 카테고리별로 하나씩 하나씩 넣어 주는 그런 식인데 어, 이 카테고리는 당연히 이 트레이닝 데이터 안에 있는 아까 우리가 이런 이렇게 넣은 것 중에서 그런 거고. 어. 이거 하러 갔다. 어. 또 들어오셨네. 오케이. 어 그래서 일단은 이거는 리쉐이프는 그 이제 뭐야 이거 마이너스 원은 이제 
뭐 그거를 완전히 막 일자로 드르륵 만들어 주는 거고 내가 봤던 걸로는 기억하기로는 그렇고 이제 그거를 그거 플랫핀더리 해가지고 그거 좀 그거 평탄화 해주고 그 다음에 어 하여튼간에 이거는 X랑 Y를 그거를 다 데이터 만지다 그려가지고 이제 클래시파이 넣, 넣을 수 있게 하는 거야 어, 그래가지고 이제 소프트 웨어 머신 하는 건데 어, 그래가지고 이제 이 커널을 여러 가지도 여러 가지 있다고 하니까 나중에 그거 라이브러리 다큐먼트 저거 뭐야 에스케일런 다큐먼트 가가지고 보면은 인유도 있고 뭐 여러 가지 있다고 하더라고 그래서 이거는 뭐 알아서 해보시고 어 그다음에 이걸 이거를 함으로써 이제 되는 이게 돌아가는 거죠 한번 그래가지고 어, 뭐 어큐레시 그가 이제 정확도도 이제 계산을 하고 이렇게 연습 치고 나는 그래서 이거는 보고 어떻게 잘 했나 안 했나 리프레시션 콜 스코어 서포트 이건데 뭐 그렇다고 하고 어, 이거는 오리지널이고 근데 이거는 그거 벡터 머신이 어떻게 그거를 <웃음> 예측했나 그거지 That's g o o So okay, so is there anyone of the whole who want to explain, to share your screen and explain in English? Venisa, are you there? Venisa? Yes, Professor. Yes. Yes. Can, you, can you share your screen and then just step by step quickly introduce what you have uh, done and what you understood? Yeah, I think that will be help, helpful for all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, please unmute your microphone. Yes. Yes, please turn on. Yeah, can you tell the step by step what you did here? Uh, in here pass, pass. We... Okay, now I am attending it. Mm -hmm. so I I explain. Yeah, yeah, just step by step. Okay, yeah. So just mm -hmm. here we are importing the the database, and here importing the libraries. Mm -hmm. So then we plot the image, and then process it to store the data. Mm -hmm. What kind we, of processing? What kind of processing did you do? So like yeah. training, no, we no, train. Resize, resize, okay. Here the size, size the data, resize the data. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in here we can see like the actual size. Okay, okay. And, and in here we will separate like, like some image and labels into X and Y. So what do you mean by the label? Why do we need the labeling? Uh, so that we can see what what categories are yes. uh, labels and okay. images? Category, okay. Level is 0, 1 index, okay? 0, 1, 2, 3, you like this, okay? Yeah, and then? And then in here, we we just uh, process the no, no, reshape, like, reshape. Can you go up? Just go up. Reshaping? Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you need this one, minus one? What does it mean? He told very nicely. Like so that it it's flat. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then in here we just uh, make it then. Like yeah, it y, it, yeah. And so now in here we're explaining explaining the SVM classifier. What, what, what are the twenty one line? Go, okay, twenty one line. Yes. For importing libraries like a port. No, no, no. What is the purpose of 21 line? Can you this? see? Yes. Um, like a 
like a model selection? No, 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 you're not model selection. That is for the, to prepare the training data set and test data set, okay? Like for, for splitting. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then, for then, the SVM. Then, then SVM, this is the SVM classifier. So in here we train the data. Mm -hmm. So then we test it. Mm -hmm. And in here we can see that the score is 0 0.875. That means 87.5 percent. Yeah, percent. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then in here we can see the precision. Yeah. What yeah. what we have learned, you know, we can measure the different statistical parameters. One was accuracy, another is the precision, recall, F1 score. That is also give us giving us more accurate information, okay, about the uh, result, okay. So yeah. yes, and then what is the last one? Yeah. So here we see the results. Yes. Like the original and the predicted. Okay, so all this actually help us to explain the result, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So hello guys, if you have any question, you may ask because the speaker is the. Uh, any of us, and you we, we will. So we are ready to listen from you to all your questions. Do you have any question? So what I understand, okay, you know, we, first you should to resize the data, and another is the second step is to normalize the data, and then you split the data for training and testing, and then classify it. Okay. Do I it? Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. yes, Professor. And uh, mm -hmm. before that, I want to uh, share some thing with you guys. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. uh, okay. So one thing we did, uh, just a moment, please. Uh, Mm, sir, uh, is it possible to write on the screen, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So can I write? Uh, I think you need to give me the permission, right? Or no, you can write. We can write, right? Okay. Just share your screen. Are you facing any difficulty? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. 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 It is now able to see, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Yes. So one thing we did that is, uh, wow. Okay. This was our image, right? And it was into 2D form, right? 100 by 100. Okay. Like this. So what we, uh, uh, yes. So what we did is we actually, uh, told to flood the image, right? That reshape command, if you remember, the reshape command, we pass this X and minus one, right? So it could you should... please uh, increase your volume? Yeah. Uh, hello? And yes, could you increase your volume, please? Volume? Volume, uh, volume, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you are able to listen? Yeah, yeah it's okay. It's okay? Okay. So, the reshape, we reshape the thing, okay? So why we reshape the thing into 1D? First we had 2D, but we reshape the thing into 1D, right? Flatten the array. So can anyone tell me why we did this? Can anybody tell me why we did this reshaping? We reshaped it into 1D, you mean? Yes, why? Uh, because of the teaching, like our model, we can use it or for like, uh, for example, in machine learning, we also need to like, uh, can fit the data. But yes, you are correct because the SVM classifier, okay? 
So in the SVM classifier actually works like this. Some 1D or some points are there, right? So some points are there, kind of features you may say. So points are there. So SVM, what it does is it divides the data like these two line, okay? So these are some points, right? So if it is 2D, how can we put the points into that plane, right? This X and Y plane. So that is why we convert it into 1D. It is clear? I mean, is it okay? Can you explain yes. more? Yes. Uh, this is X, this is Y. So we have some points, X, Y points, right? Here is one point, here is another point, here is another point, here is another point, right? And suppose another data that is here, some points, okay? So what SVM does is it draws some line to separate this data. So if it is an image, mm -hmm. this is a 2D image, right? So when you apply PCA, okay, into this image or maybe feature extraction, okay? You get some single value like this from that image, right? So, now, when we make it 1D, that means 100 into 100. This much amount of data point from one image we should get, right? Mm -hmm. So these are all the data points in 1D. So these data points we can now plot like this. So then it will be very easier for the classifier to classify. So when we apply SVM or KNN, this type of classifier to image, always we need to make that image into 1D form and then pass. So if you have 1D data, then you do not need to do that. Okay. It is already for audio, 1D. For audio, for for audio, audio, for audio file, yeah, you do not need to do that, okay? So that is the reason we did this thing, okay? And- okay. An, yeah. Another thing I want to explain in a very short manner, and then we'll do the code for this session. That is, these are all the data, okay? So we take only 20% data for testing. Okay, and this 80% data for training, okay? Sometimes you may see uh, people will tell you do the cross validation. Okay. It is very important for classifier, though we did not do it into SVM. Okay. So that means if this is my total data, suppose I divide the total data into one, two, three, four five, six part, okay? Or maybe let's see five part. Okay. So if I have total 100 data, so each box, how much data point do we have? 20 data points, 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 right? Okay. Now, when I say testing 20%, that means we can take these four beans for training and this bean for testing, right? Is this clear? Okay. Now, somebody tell me, okay, I took this fifth box for testing. What if I take this third box for testing? Why I did not take the third box for testing? Is there any reason? Because it's already used in training. Because yes, it is, yes, yes. So now, can we make it more random? We can shuffle the data. Yes, we can shuffle the data, right? So suppose for the first time when we are doing, we take one, okay, let's see. For the first time we are doing, we are taking one to four, 
and then five for testing. Second phase, we can do one thing. We can take one, two, four, and five for training, and then take three for testing, right? I mean, three means this number three bin, okay? Again, another one we can do. We can take maybe one, three, four, five, and then take the two for testing, right? This second bin for testing. So what we are doing is we split the data into five groups, right? So this is called the five groups, right? So as we split the data into five groups, so this type of test we can do for five times, right? And at the end of each test, we are getting some accuracy, right? When we test this data, training with this data set, we get some training accuracy, suppose 87%. This one we get 86%. This time we get maybe 85%. So at the end, you guys can average this three, average this four, and then you can give like, okay, my model performs 86%. How? Based on this three time we try the model and then we average it. Suppose this 87 plus 86, plus 85 and then as three times we tried we can divide by three so we get an average performance this is called cross validation okay so just one time we run the data and we take okay we, we are taking this only four <clears throat> one to four and five we are using for testing so the question might come, okay, why you take one to four for test uh, training? Why didn't you take five number five, fifth bin for training? What it does? So to remove this type of confusion and biasness, okay? To make it more random, we are making this cross validation. Okay, this is the part. So I will show a little bit uh, with KNN, how can we do the cross validation? But this is a very simple comment, but to give you the little understanding of it, okay? So let's go back to the coding. Okay. So SVM we finished and now let's do the KNN. So you already split the data into training testing, right? And we already make it uh, uh, 1D. So KNN also works into the 1D data, okay? So we do not need to do anything. Just like before, we imported the SVM classifier, you see here, right? So we will now import the KNN classifier. Rest of the part will be very similar, okay? from k neighbor classifier okay and now k equal to k neighbor classifier So very similar thing like before we did, uh, we build this thing SVC classifier and then we feed that. So here also we create the KNN classifier. We did not give any parameter inside, you see, like before, okay? And now KNN dot fit, okay? So for fitting, as you know, training and testing, we need to pass, not testing, why training? So we can run this and yes, like this. Now you see here, uh, it is giving us some parameters, okay? When it runs the KNN, it is telling us the number of neighbors is five, metric is mean cos key, leap size is 30, like this way. However, however, this thing also you can define inside like previous. So you can go to the documentation into the internet. This like before. K 
scalar neighbor classifier and here you can see what type of things you can pass inside into it however now i want to show you for cross share, share the code please share the code ah yes yes professor <clears throat> okay so this and before that let's check our model performance into the test data so Yeah, 0 0.8125 this code came okay so this is how we can check the score now i told you i showed you one thing like uh, we need we can do the cross validation right you understand what is cross validation so how we can do it into the code okay so Well, of cross validation okay so okay so for that we need to import a library first this library <clears throat> and then we should create a model so previously we gave the name of our KN is just KN. So now let's name it a different one. Let's keep that one like that KN CV cross validation, K near hood neighbor classifier. Okay, good. Now we need to fit the uh, data. So when we use the cross validation, the fitting command is little bit different. Okay. So we suppose I store the result into this variable and then cross this this command we need to run cross val score. Cross val score. And then we need to pass the classifier inside into it. So the classifier is into KNN underscore CV. So we give that there and then x underscore train, comma y underscore train, comma now cv how much cv you want to do five cv <clears throat> okay so five is split we will do into the training test data set okay and then we can run it okay it rain and then we can check the score of each 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 cv we can check the score i am giving you the code after running this command so print cv score print cv scores dot mean every time how much accuracy it got it will give me that okay so you see here five times we ran right so this is the one time this is the second time this is the third time fourth time fifth time and then it giving me that average score which i previously told so i'm giving you the codes into the chat okay so get this okay So this is one way to do the cross validation. Okay, there is another way to do the cross validation. Uh, I will also show that one. Uh, so to do that one, you see here, one more thing I will show. When the K neighbor classifier come, you see here something called leaf size, here something called neighbor, okay? It is a number 30. So you might say, okay, why it is 30 came? So you can do one thing here inside you can see, Lift number. Suppose you can write. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, lift number. Suppose thirty. Now my question is, you can play with this number. You can give twenty-eight. You can give twenty-nine. You can give thirty. So the thing is, every time you need to change it, right? And every time you need to run. So no need to do that. 
you can also tell okay i need a leaf number which will range in between 1 to 30 okay so if you define this range and then if you do the cross validation then each time for each cross validation they will check this number as well for you so to do that we can take an approach called grid search cross validation okay so this is the step for our cross validation and then we can do the grid search cross validation so how to do it we can see um, cross validation okay so for that again we need to import a different library python is all about library so this time the classifier name we give uh, can and two okay and now previously i told you about the leaf size but let's play with an example with only neighbor size so we see here the neighbors come five but i want to see okay if i have five <coughs> neighbors one two three four five so for each cross validation how much it will take, uh, take for me okay so now uh this the same KNN grid search cv we pass the KNN model param grid and param grid means this one and cv5 and then we need to feed the data into the model okay so like this okay okay yes so now it gave me the result so this is more dynamic actually because I am sharing the code. Uh, professor? Yes. Uh, I, I am not able to. <laughs> okay, I got it. Good. Yes. So this is the code. And this is another way to do the cross validation. And now one more thing I will show you this cross validation you did. Okay. Now the question is, uh, okay, I did the cross validation to see which number of neighbors are the best. Okay. So how can you see the result, right? So to see the result, we should write this command. So best parameters. So it is telling me, okay, in my case, when I took from neighbor one to five, among them, neighbor number four performs best. So, okay, so for neighbor number four, how much was my accuracy, mean accuracy, okay? So this thing we can get with this comment. So I am giving you the comments into the chat. So you can write and also we will share the code as well with you. So no problem with that. So yes, and now we can also check the accuracy score, how our model performed with test data on test data. So can and GCV, GCSV, we said the name and the test and test data we pass. And then we got this accuracy, the accuracy score got down a lot. And like before, we can now check that classification report and other thing as well in a very similar manner. So no need to worry with those things. So till this part, we actually finished like how we can <coughs> use the classifiers, okay? These two classifier and you can actually go to the internet and search more. And this is for today with the images, okay? okay you know, I, uh, yes. uh, I have a question, okay? For example, yes. if, they, if they want to mm -hmm. uh, check the performance with a different other classifier, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. so how the higher they can find the list of the possible okay. classifier oh okay okay professor yes very good question uh most of the classifier are belong to this psychic learn library a scalar okay yes. so into the google okay. just search mm -hmm. sk learn uh classy okay so mm -hmm. classifier comparison if you go here you can see here scalearn.neighbors import k neighbors classifier okay this oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. random forest okay 
There is, there, is a, there is a long list. There is a long list. There is a long list. Yeah. So you can actually click into one of these. Suppose Kenya is neighbor classified, then you can go yeah. into the more details, like how it yeah. works. Yeah, Example okay. also. Yeah. Mm, right. Wait, wait, wait. Can you go down a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Just see the names. Hello, guys. If you see the names, nearest neighbor, near, linear SBA. So, RBF is so those are the classifiers, right? Yes. Data yes. Boost, APIs, QDA, all are the classifiers here. Yeah. So you can check, okay? You can check uh, the other possible classifier for your own data set. Okay? So what we have learned, we have learned how to process the data before classifying, uh, fit it into the classifier. So those are, those steps are very really common and important for you. Research the image, normalize the image, train and test the uh, building the train data set, test data set, and then later once you have the ready data, then you will be able to what select the classifier for your own data set. Okay, so it is not so difficult as I think. Yeah, up to now everything is clear. If you have any question, you may ask. Otherwise, we may quickly move to the rest of the part of the list. Do you have any question? Oh, I have a question. Yes. yes. So how we can choose uh, which one is best? Uh, <laughs> based, on the, based on the accuracy, simple answer. Yeah, uh, you can check uh, which one is the best based on your result. Yes, yeah. uh, in real life, actually, what we do that is why I showed you the cross validation and it's a <coughs> CV based on a lot of parameters, people pick the best one, but it should be defined by you what you want to do. You tell, okay, I want to build a classifier and I only want to see the accuracy, then based on accuracy, you should compare. But the ideal case is. And uh, not only with one parameter, you should consider the F1 score, precision, recall, accuracy computation, score. Computation, computation time. Computation time. Also the cross validation you should consider. So these all the parameters you should consider. The codes are available into the internet, but you need to first create your roadmap, how you want to go and how you want to do it, okay? So this is the part. Okay, thank you. Okay, quickly proceed on the list. Uh, okay, yeah. Professor, we have, uh, I think, more 30 minutes left. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, so I will go with the audio processing now. Yes. But yes. before that, I will, I want to share with you guys this code. They, they already know the how to process the, how to read yes. audio file, how to yes, process yes. the audio file. Yes. That you can move quickly move to the classifier. Okay? Yeah. Yes. They are interested to know more about the classification part. Uh, the classification is the very same technique, but mm -hmm. I actually wanted okay, to okay. introduce some pre processing. Yeah, it's parts. okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, I will share the codes with you uh, by, by professor. So he will share the codes with you. Okay. Yeah. Can, 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 you, can you create the PDF? PDF of it, and then I can share the now. Yes, yes, Professor. Okay. I, I already have the PDF, so. Okay, just share, share your PDF to the chat, okay? Student can now look at it. Okay, just. Uh, um, okay. No, they need the permission. No, listen, what you can do, you can download those PDF. No, uh, Professor, I gave the access to anybody. So I gave this Google folder link, okay? No, that's, that, that's fine. Okay. Hello, so, guys, please click on that and then. Yeah. Yes, no, now we can see, yes, fine. So this is session two, one and two uh, is here, okay? And uh, also when I prepared for you guys, I had so many things extra. So you can actually go to the documents and you can learn more things. Uh, these are some reference codes. And I also took this course from internet. So okay. not like I wrote it by myself. Mm -hmm. So you can check this uh, PDF file, the first PDF session three, 
uh, and plus plus. So in that part, actually, I tried to show for each neighbor how each method performs, okay? For each number of how to show those graphs and these things. So you can just play with these codes by yourself, okay? Now I will move to the audio processing because I think that will be very helpful for you to... Mm, Okay, audio analysis, okay. Let's see. So if you go to my uh, um, presentation slide, there you can find like I already have uh, linked the data, okay? So uh, give you the link of my data sets, okay? So there is another data set there that is, uh, that cats and dogs data set. So here actually we have some sound from cat and dog and based on the sound we will like uh, separate the cats and dogs. So I will just uh, now don't do the code in live rather than I will just explain what I am going to do it do here. So you can just uh, look at the code and you can do practice by your own in your own laser time. So very similarly, like, like before I showed you guys, like uh, you should uh, check the file directory. So here the similar fashion, I just copied the path and pasted here and then ran it, okay. And then I actually import those important libraries like slowly, before. slowly, please, zero, okay. slowly. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> first is we check the file directory and then mm -hmm. we imported the libraries. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are some libraries we be needing. And then I have built here a function. Okay. The function called init function, initialization function. That's why I gave the name for init function. So with this, what I am trying to do, as I will try to explain some basic operations on audio data. So how the graph will be looking or how this graph should be look uh, like uh, each graph. So for them, I create a style. Suppose into the Microsoft Word when you open, you style your header footer like that right so in a very similar way with this function the graph can be styled okay so the for that purpose this function is written now uh it is very interesting that this code you should write uh, i mean uh, you should write into collab on your uh, own free time because we can load a sample data okay so X comma SR and Librosa is a library to load the audio data. CV2 was the library to load the image data. Okay. So how we are loading it are like this way. So you see here test cats. Okay. There is a sound cat 1110.wav. Okay. Or cat 1.wav, whatever is the file name. Just copy the path and then just double dot here paste the path okay yes paste the path and then you run this command ipd.audio and rate equal to sr sr means the sampling rate sampling rate means in one second how much data point we are collecting right here if i'm not wrong uh some frequency okay so we are running this command and here the funny thing, I think you guys cannot listen, but I can actually play the data. Okay. Okay. So with this comment, you can play the audio. If it is a voice, you can play into your Python console. Okay. No need to go to some other tools. You can do it here. Second thing is, we want to look how is this signal particularly look like? plot this thing. So this is into the time domain, right? So this signal we loaded into X and then we listen how it sounds like. And after that, we can plot it as well. 
So this is the command to plot it. And this is the time domain. Okay, so what does it mean by time domain? It means by time domain is when we collect the data, we are listening to some sounds, right? And when the time is progressing, the cat is doing meow and then meow, meow, meow. So when it is telling loudly meow, then you see here a long spikes, right? And when it is very slowly telling meow, very small spikes. So like this, you can actually see that uh, audio signal into this uh, 2D form. And this axis is time. And with time axis, we can see how the, this is actually amplitude. Energy, energy, energy. 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 okay. So uh, how it varies, you can see from here. Another thing is frequency domain representation. So, yeah, they, they already know. They already know, okay. So how you can do in Python, I already uh, explain, uh, did in did this code. So we had the time domain into X and then we converted it into first Fourier transformation. And here we are taking half of the signal sampling frequency. So sampling frequency was 22,050. So we took it here like 11,025. And then we take the absolute value, okay? And then like MATLAB probably you did, or you may see uh, that that tool is uh, very advanced into signal processing, but in Python also you can do it. So by running this command actually, okay. So here, make sure you give the sampling frequency divided by two, okay? So it's a divided by two. So this value should be this 11 to 2, 5 is our SR divided by 2. So if your own code, you should first check your sampling frequency of the signal. And then here you put the number which is sampling frequency by 2, OK? And then uh, if you plot this, you see we get that frequency domain distribution over here with this command, OK? Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we can do short time Fourier transform. What is short time Fourier transform? It is a variant of Fourier transform. Sometimes uh, for the audio signal, suppose you do not want to extract the features, okay? As professor already taught you, you want to extract the features and you can fine tune the features. Sometimes what happens is if you select the features, the accuracy don't come good. So you can experiment. Sometimes you can take this time domain representation and like our previous example, as it is into 1D, you can pass to SVM, KNN, or some other classifier you would like to. And then you check the accuracy. Or you can convert it into frequency domain representation by this first method. And this type of diagram, it should come, of course, depending on your signal. And then you check. How is the accuracy, okay? Then another thing is short time Fourier transform. This is a little advanced technique than Fourier transform, okay? So just you can play with this code. No need to modify anything directly from here. So, okay, let's see. So with the short time Fourier transform, again, X dot shape, you can, and again, you can plot like plot dot plot like this way. So this calculation you can change. And uh, another thing I will tell, this is a spectrogram. So this is time frequency representation. Here is the very fun part, okay? So what it does is, this is our one dimensional signal. So it like stresses this one dimension into 2D. Okay, so it will create from a signal an image. Okay, so this is how with this code you can create images from the signal. Okay, now if I think you, some of you may know about this deep learning classifiers, right? This CNN, okay, first the CNN. 
Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Vivek, are you taking any any course related to the deep learning classifier? Uh -huh. Code? No, no, no. No, Vivek. Uh, code professor? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, maybe they are doing some course okay, related to the ah, okay, 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 machine okay. learning and deep learning. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, so then fine. So then very easier part is like, as you can now convert from uh, 1D to 2D. So this image now you can pass to this deep learning classifier directly. So that, that makes your life more easier, I believe, because you can directly get that image. Now you need to find out how to save this image. So I did it for you till this part, <laughs> but you need to find out a way how to save this image and make a data set and pass to your deep learning classifier. So this is also one way to do it. So yes, uh, that is from mm -hmm. today. Okay, so listen, what, what he tried to explain, you know, if uh, you will use the, you if you plan to build a model using the audio file, you will need to, what? reshape the data okay you can use the raw data in the classifier as bm or canon okay or any other class classifier okay because all those classifier work on the 1d signals okay but if you know if you see the what he try to explain if you when you move to the deep learning classifier you can see those classifier actually work on the units okay so in that case what you can do we already have i already have uh, taught you how to convert one into two to see to the signal in that way you can use or you can convert you can generate the spectrogram okay to the spectrogram for the audio file and then those spectrogram you can fit in the 2d classifier yeah. that that he tried to explain here yeah. so yeah that's all that's all about uh, today's uh, uh, talk. So if you have any question or confusion, any any other question, okay, uh, uh, even though outside the talk, you can ask. It will help you to build your own project. If you have any question or any idea, you may ask. Yeah. Yes. This is your turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jan, do you have any question? No? Hello? Oh, it's clear, Professor. Okay, no. it's clear. So, can you share your experience about the today's class? Uh, yeah, today was very good. We did very practical thing and we learned by doing things using uh, machine learning libraries and mm -hmm. it was very productive for me. Okay, thank you. Rosia, can you explain your experience over the class? Yeah, uh, yeah we, I, I think it is kind of, uh, uh, kind of, uh, how to say, we have we have no time for actually uh, interpreting, uh, not implementing the audio part, so that is kind of feel bad, sad. But uh, I think the uh, audio, uh, not audio, uh, the color color classification is well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, he has uh, shared all the materials, so you can practice. Okay, you can practice. And I'm sure, I'm sure that today's class will help you to build uh, your own project, okay? For using your own data set. Yeah. Think uh, uniquely, okay? What kind of problem you solve it, okay? For the other guys, it's more than other. You want to say anything? Yeah, no, the bag. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. what do you want to say? I yes, not fully, but yeah. Mm -hmm. the way. Yeah, I also mm -hmm. like the really the practical examples. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for the 
Cinayet Hasan and Mr. Monier is not. They are like tech class. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Shuro, are you there? Shuro? Venisa? Venisa, are you there? Shuro? You want to say anything? Me? Yes. Shuro, 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 I'm going. Ah, you mean me? Shuro. Professor okay, Saurav. Okay, Saurav. You are calling Saurav so I was not replying, Professor. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Saurav. Do you want to say anything about the today's class? Nothing, Professor. Just it's great to learn. And okay, great to learn. Yes. So please practice. Okay, practice. Renisa, are you there? Renisa. Okay. Yes, Professor. Are you going to say anything about the today's class to the speaker? Um, I thought it was really informative. I learned mm -hmm. many things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thank <laughs> you so much for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like my students, I'm also learning, okay, from my... Uh, I guess presenters. Okay, so today's actually the talk was very informative and useful and well aligned with, our, with your project. Okay, I hope this knowledge will be helpful for you. Okay, so uh, as he shared all the materials with you and uh, we practice together with him, so I think uh, it helps a lot. Okay, so thank you, Jamai, again for your time and. Uh, wonderful experience uh, you have shared with us. Yeah, we are so grateful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank, thank you Professor. And uh, uh, we will see you in another course in another time. Yeah. Yes, uh, I we I gave you and good luck. Like okay, I want to share one thing. Please, defense is uh, just maybe the, what 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 about your defense day? Maybe. Uh, Professor, it is not fixed yet, but I hope so, like from 16 to uh, 26 oh, or okay. 27. See, just his defense is approaching, PhD defense is approaching uh, the next week or next next week. So in his uh, crucial time, okay, he managed the time for you guys, okay? So you should be, uh, yeah, give a big hand to him. Yeah, thank you, Jumai. Uh, Do you have to you say anything, Jumai? Yeah, I actually gave one link into the chat. Mm -hmm. So if you guys can go to the link, you can see one project. It was a mm -hmm. uh, uh, GitHub project actually. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is uh, as you will do your project, I took this project from internet and uh, I actually tried to compile. So you can actually uh, do this project by your own and try to understand what each line I did in that project. So this is for your practice. So you can learn by yourself. I tried to jot down a full project over here. Okay. Oh, that's fine. What kind of data did you use in the project? Uh, okay, uh, this is some CSV data format. So oh. some 1D data kind of signal. Oh. So data I also gave there, but they can actually took the other part, the part they need only from mm. this project and no 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 play. actually in this course they can mm. do the project based on the audio image text video okay anything is okay okay, okay. so i think that your csv file also another yeah text another file. way okay another, another way. way text file yeah i'm sure it will also helpful for them to be the yeah project based on the csv data not the yes. audio not the image okay? mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's fine so you can play with. So it. thank you again. Okay, thank you. Good luck for your PhD <laughs> defense and good luck for your future activity. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, you, Professor, and thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. you. Okay, hello guys. Okay, please submit uh, your project proposal by next class. Okay, and whenever you have any question, you may reach me through the cacao or email or anyway. Okay, good luck. Okay. Have a nice week. Goodbye. Goodbye.